How can an all-knowing, all-loving God allow suffering? If God is so good, why is the world so bad? If God knows everything, why does he allow evil to happen? Thanks Daniel for the inspiration for this video. We will always be brothers in compassion for our fellow man. But in God I cannot trust and the problem of evil is a good example of why. Yes this is the argument that atheists love because it is the argument that theists will often acknowledge as you do. You see, God created everything, and everything God created is good. You see, God created everything, and everything God created is good. You see, God created everything, and everything God created is good. If Sorry I thought listening to it three times might help, but if everything is good, then there can be no evil, yet. We have already established that God lets bad things happen to good people therefore everything cannot be good if bad things happen unless those bad things are really good things. So in this case is it all a matter of perspective? Evil isn't a thing, it's a wrong choice. It's the consequences of a wrong choice. It's only when the world chooses sin and selfishness that evil is allowed to manifest. So polio the black plague, cancer, are all the results of wrong choices? Seems to me, like God has some fundamental design flaws. Or perhaps the universe was not designed for humans in the first place? and God actually uses suffering for good. The fallacy that a lot of people make is that if they can't see or imagine a good reason for something, there must not be one. But this sort of mindset is blind faith of the highest order. Think of the story of Joseph and the coat of many colors. You know, his brothers threw him into a pit and sold him into slavery. He was brought into a foreign land, pleaded to God for help, but he was still forced into bondage and misery. No one would have blamed Joseph had he abandoned his faith or blamed God for his suffering but instead he allowed these trials to refine his character, and his masters noticed, and because of this, Joseph rose to become the Prime Minister of Egypt. As now of course the easiest way to get rid of the problem is to take God out of the equation, but that's no fun, because, if we assume a God, then the question becomes one of God's character, so we get to ask what kind of twisted master plan would a God have to have to allow this level of suffering in the world? Now if God is powerless that would explain it, i.e. he created the universe, but once in motion God has no control, this is the impotent God, or the type of God Einstein imagined, but this is not the God you are imagining, you believe in a personal God, a God that looks over your shoulder, a all powerful God and all knowing God and all loving God, however, this type of God is incompatible with the evidence. What kind of all-loving God would let 10.5 million children starve to death each and every year? Please enlighten me, as to the utility of their suffering. If it were in my power to prevent this travesty I would, and any one human with God's supposed power, would prevent this. I know you would if it were in your power. So we are left with three types of solutions to this question. Evil impotent, or non-existence. Now we can resort to the nuclear option. The Ponzi scheme to end all Ponzi schemes where dead men tell no tales, heaven, and simply say God gives all these children season passes to the harp festival in heaven, for putting up with their suffering, but even if that, if God is looking over everyone's shoulders what kind of sadistic pleasure does God get from watching 10.5 million children die of starvation each and every year, and more in the past. Yes sometimes people do overcome adversity, but 10.5 million starving children don't each year. For every one example you have Daniel, I feel comfortable in predicting I can find 10.5 million examples where people don't. If we're keeping score, you're losing 10.5 million to 1, or some ratio thereof, evil important or non-existent. If there's a god, it is not a god I would want to follow let alone worship. Any heaven he would create it would most certainly be hell, given his total disregard for the needless suffering of children. And if god is implant, it makes little sense to speak of him. He might as well be non-existent. Atheists are being nice when they point out God does not exist. The truth is if God does exist his action or lack of it in this case clearly indicates he is evil. Or at the very best has an unquenchable appetite for the suffering of children. We can never fully understand why God allows evil and suffering to exist in this world. Sure you can turn your back on God's actions and simply say God works in mysterious ways. But evil flourishes when good people do nothing, especially when that evil is God. 
As a matter of reciprocity we all should be held accountable for our action or inaction. It is the foundation of a good society. The fact that God gets a pass on everything simply because he is God seems to me like a classic case of enabling. Why should we hold God to a lower standard than we would any human on earth?